Hey RW down here in the Mountain Storm Workshop. I am working on a custom reservoir for an artist in the UK who's going to be doing a uh, Bitcoin miner as an art installation and he's going to be liquid cooling it and he wanted to have one of my waterfall reservoirs for the liquid cooling system. Which is great because that's one of the things I do. And I only like to use Kimcast Cellcast acrylic sheet. That's the real deal. It's real expensive, but it has uh, some properties that extrude acrylic lack. And it's excellent for making reservoirs. So here's the reservoir design. It's 6 by 10 by 12. Okay. So here you see the 10 by 12 part of it. Right? It's going to have, I made a video earlier demonstrating these little ledges. Uh, these are stack laminated out of 3 8 so I'm cutting all these little pieces out of 3 8 and stack laminate them until they're five and a quarter across and uh, that would be balls of fun. Here's the pieces getting ready to be cut out. I've got my cut list for the quarter inch material. That's all my internal parts. That's my bottom that the three eighths will sit on top of to make a nice strong glue joint and then three eighths into it this way nice strong glue joint and then the lid will get a rebate all around the top of it because I have a removable lid. And here's my cut list for the 3 8 material. I've already taken these out. And you'll see little question marks by everything because I want to uh, stack everything up and get actual numbers. I mean, I could say, hey, I want to make that 6 inches. But if this was, you know, a little bit wider or a little bit narrower, once it's stack laminated, there's a, a certain amount of uh, slop that sort of builds up when you're stacking things together even when you're fusing it with acrylic so you gotta take that into account and I'll do my measurements after I've made these that'll give me my internal size my external size and I'll know what size to cut these exactly but they're pretty gonna be pretty close to the sizes that are listed alright I'll do more of this stuff uh, off camera than on because you know watching me bounce off parts and stuff like that isn't going to be very exciting but once I get some stuff assembled I'll show you what I've done and uh, we'll just keep rolling with this. This will be like a little documentation of the entire build. This will be the first part. Okay I feel like I'm making some progress now. I've got my parts cut up and before I get to this point I have to peel the paper off of them obviously and then I pick the best face and I polish it and I leave the saw marks in it. I like that look. It's really cool looking. And then the back is going to get uh, sanded all at once once it's all glued together to make it perfectly flat so it'll glue up to the ledge. right? And the tops and bottoms of them all have already been dressed. So we're just about ready for glue up here. Just wanted to show you what I'm up to. And then the next one, for the next level down, will be alternated. It'll start with the small pieces on the outside and have the big pieces on the inside. And it goes back and forth. That's the way he wants it. Looking pretty good. I'm just going to clean them one more time. Now I'll stack them back and I'll glue them all together. Alright, it's time to do glue up. I usually like to test my solvent just to make sure that I'm getting no fog and everything's good because this stuff is hydrophilic. It likes to absorb atmospheric humidity. So anyway, I'm going to put this down here to rest up against all these spaces to keep these guys in place. And now I'm just going to run along and I'm going to push each one of these bad boys up. Get them equidistant. Okay, make sure everything's where I want it to be. That's it. Now it's just a matter of getting the glue in there without getting it all over the place. Gluing up is not the hard part. It's all the cutting and polishing and cleaning, keeping everything just right. If I'm 
lucky. This will glue up really nice and won't have any problems. Okay. And that's that. Now I'm just going to let it just be. I got a drop of glue right there. Just going to let it evaporate and then I'll buff that back out later. The faces get cut at a ramp anyway. It's not going to matter. I like to give it a good eyeball. It's as good as it's going to get. All right then. I'm going to make the two that are the same right now, and then I'll make the other two. So no, I didn't forget that they're alternating. I know they're alternating. I'm just going to go ahead and make two of them at the same time here. Get those guys done. They come out to be about five and three sixteenths. It's very close to my five and a quarter estimate, but not, you know, perfect. That's why I like to make these first, and then I will know. And I'll make sure that there's no variance in between the different ones I'm making. So that's why i got to make them up all first, measure them all, and if I have to, sand them down to whatever the smallest width is. Okay. There's that. There we go. It's all in there. This one felt like it was a tiny bit wider for some reason. I don't know though. Maybe not. Maybe not. 
And do this think it is. Okay, got those babies all where I want them. Push these over. I don't want to bore you with the whole process guys, I'm not going to show you every step of the way but in some ways, unless you see the whole process from end to end, you don't realize just how much time is involved in it you got to cut each one, mark each one, cut each one, buff each one clean each one, peel the paper off each one <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot to do two more to go so, I was right the second one I made was thicker. It's uh, maybe a 32nd, but that's enough to screw it up. You know, if I were to uh, try and glue this one and this one in the same reservoir, it wouldn't work because they have to be slap up against each other. So I'll be surfacing these this one down just a smidge, but we'll wait and see what the smallest one is smallest one might be even smaller than the one I just made so and the reason for that is not because there's any thickness to the glue the glue is actually melting the parts together to solvent cement the thickness is because they cast these sheets they cast them and if they're if their casting form isn't dead level or if the moon is full and it's over to the left side or whatever <laughs> pulls the fluid over and you're gonna get smidge thinner material on this side of the sheet than this side of the sheet. And that's just over a two foot sheet, you know. Imagine over an eight foot sheet, you'd have quite a bit of variation. So it's not precise, but it is pretty. So just to show I'm not talking out my ass about how sheets vary wildly. There calipers locked down. I've got nine point two four. Again. Nine point three one. Make sure I'm in frame here. So we got nine two four, nine three one, nine let's make sure I didn't change the caliper. Nine seven one took in half a millimeter from one end to the other. Nine four five. So none of the four corners measures the same. You can guess that the middle will also measure different. So even on a twelve inch range, nine five seven, you're gonna get variations so you can't cut like oh if I'd measured this and cut along this one edge I would have had everything the same thickness unfortunately nine dead on nine skinny here fat here so on and so forth but that's just the way it goes and this is the best stuff you can buy Kimcast GP Cellcast we'll start it on the alternate pattern one and I got one more of those to make and then I'll dress the back of them them to a ledge and then do the other operation. So wasn't that fun, huh? <laughs> what a way to spend a half a day. Um, they look really cool though. You can see the staggered the staggered thing going on. And uh, next step is to uh, flatten the back. It's got to be kept perpendicular to the side got to be perfect to fit inside a waterproof box. Once I have the three of these all the same width, because one of them is a little bit big, about a 30 second big, I'll have to run it down, then I will know what size to make all my internal parts. So all my internal parts are a particular size. And then when I stack two sides, you know, for my side panels, which are here, 
So my side panels are three eighths. So once I stack two of those together, then I'll know how big to make my bottom and my top. Can't do that yet. Same with the sides, because I've got a question mark there. Because I don't know, is it six? Is it six and sixteenth? Is it five and seven? Seventeen thousand one hundred and thirty-two thirty seconds of a smidgen of a red hair on a wet turtle. Who knows, man. I don't like to do too much measuring. Measuring is very inaccurate. I like to build something and scribe it and then line my saw up and cut it to my scribe mark and then sand it down. And then I know it'll fit. That's about the only way to do it. You sit there and you make a measurement. What if your pen is over this way, your pencil is this way, or your pencil's very sharp today, and you know, an hour later it's dull, makes a bigger mark, and then you cut on the wide side of the big mark, and then all of a sudden you got something that doesn't work. It's got to be scribed, cut, and fit. That's how I work. All right, my friends, that's it for part one. I will show you completed ledges and some other assembly features in part two.